thank you for coming and uh, my name is aniket and i'll be talking about uh, strengthening code, uh, code review culture in uh, any organization so so first of all uh, i have been contributing to kde since 2016 and since then i was very fond of meeting all the kde contributors uh, uh, in, in back in india as well as abroad and i tried for uh, Uh, coming for towards random meetings and and for uh, and also i tried to go for academy 2018 but unfortunately my visa was rejected and sadly i couldn't uh, make it but then yeah, finally i am here at academy and uh, so happy that uh, i made it and was able to meet all of you guys so uh, again i actually proposed the same talk uh, last year when our goal was uh, major majorly focused on streamlined uh, uh, streamlined uh, contrib- uh, like uh, uh, like uh, getting in new contributors so so uh, for the next 30 minutes we'll start uh, we'll go through a, a quick st- uh, open source story of mine and uh, and then we'll start on why uh, code review can be toxic and some something that i call a requirement uh, for uh, how, how how and why can uh, code review be toxic so and we'll talk about uh, how we can act if any toxicity actually exists in any kind of uh, organization how we can actually try to get rid of them and uh, maybe how uh, how exactly we can try to do it and uh, yeah so within a different perspective because i have been a student i, I have been a mentor and i have been an org admin and also uh, yeah and something similar uh, i'll yeah so <laughs> by 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 the end of the day i believe yeah since this is the last last talk of the day i think all will be fine so will uh, yeah so i am currently doing my bachelor's my final years in uh, amrutha university back in india and uh, so basically there is a students community called fos at amrutha or right now it's called amfos uh, so basically yeah so this is the group of people students we have back there who con- who like the most of them here actually contributes to open source the various projects and what not so we as a group of students after class hours we spend lot of uh, lot of time uh, hacking into various projects contributing to open source and uh, and st- uh, stuff related also this kind of community grows because the seniors or the past students who who are who are actually who were actually part of this community uh, goes on and mentors the juniors who actually joined the uh, current semesters and that's how this uh, commu- uh, this small students community actually uh, coexist and it's been 10 years uh, since this community has been contributing to uh, in uh, various open source organizations and yeah uh, so uh, from the beginning of my bachelor's i have been a student of this community uh, and uh, after my first year of bachelor's i have been a mentor uh, of few for few of the students here and luckily i could say that i brought in almost three students f- uh, from my university to contribute to kde uh, and and two of them are here so i am so uh, and so starting off uh, uh in my first year of my bachelor's i uh, uh it took me two months to get my first patch in and after that i did a kd soc with k stars and then uh yeah as i told i, I was interested to go and meet all the kd developers i uh, i went to kd india guwahati and uh, we met there yeah <laughs> so after that luckily uh, i i was selected as a gsoc student for krita and uh, moving on again to uh, on 
I actually did a GSOC with GNU Linux and was an org admin for KDE as well for GCI. And yeah, uh, I have contributed to a few other various projects in open source as well. So, uh, our uh, last year's major goal was to have a streamlined onboarding of uh, new contributors. So, are we actually done with that or like we actually released new goals and should, uh, are we actually done with that goal? Like, is it completed or is there more work to be done? Right. Uh, and yesterday's, uh, like, there was a talk from the goalkeepers that, uh, like, the most of the contributors actually had one patch submitted. And after that, they were not actually capable of going forward. Right. Uh, like, most of them dropped out after that. Or, like, uh, and couldn't be a consistent co contributors to a KDE. Yeah, so the number of people who stuck around uh, after that is pretty much less. So wh why, what can be the reason for that? Uh, yeah, so I personally believe that so, uh, like most of the contributors and the community people can actually uh, like, like communicate mostly through code reviews. So if we have a better code reviewing system, then I believe that we can actually uh, make a consistent environment for all the new contributors to actually stay in, in the community and build an ecosystem which we all love to work on. So basically, uh, yeah, so let's start, uh, start with what's code review. So basically, uh, maybe let's say uh, I saw a bug or I saw a, pa a feature that which I'm uh, like in a project which I'm uh, excited about and uh, I, I want to fix that or I want to implement that feature. So basically, uh, uh, I actually open a ticket, I, I write the code, I open a ticket and I send it through. So there will be uh, other community people who actually have been working with the project for quite some time and uh, they will actually review our work. So that's basically code review. Yeah. So like, let's say the 101 of code review. Basically, if we have an IRC channel or something similar, we have a group walkthrough of the bug. Like, let's say if I just uh, post that bug in bug or feature in our IRC channel and uh, the team actually goes through it and try to see like oh, if that bug actually exists or uh, something similar like yeah and uh, and the contributor actually uh, uh, resolves that bug or gets the feature done and sends in a patch and if there is a uh, like let's say um, <clears throat> a person who is actually familiar with the uh, project can actually uh, go collaborate with him or maybe the maintainer can actually, if he's reviewing the uh, patch set, he can, they can both do a pair programming as well. And that's how m most of the time it has done. And uh, at the end, a pull request is sent and it's merged. So the plus ones of code review. Uh, as we all know, the knowledge and experience uh, is shared between the new contributor and the people who is actually reviewing the code. Right, and uh, it should invoke a sense of mentorship between uh, the people in the community or let's say the project maintainers or the project team. And uh, it should like uh, enrich the student, uh, not students, I mean, uh, the new contributors to actually uh, come in and work well in an ecosystem like this. And also there will be a difference of opinion anywhere in any community, so it helps to actually foster debates and it, it helps people to actually understand what others think of the particular issue and how different it is from their views. And uh, help, uh, helping, student, uh, helping uh, people to, ha uh, 
to do debates and communicate well within the community it brings in uh, decision making skills which is uh, a highly effective quality in any contributor in a community yeah and of course the quality of the code is act will be uh, well maintained and yeah so this is the uh, the crux of this whole talk and code review as it is can bring in toxic unsupportive environment if not done right so uh, this talk i have split into two uh, uh, a code review which is which in a helpful scenario and not in a un, like in a un, un, unhelpful scenario as well so you could uh, see that uh, like there's sm a small snippet of git uh, a pull request chats so there's an over or overwhelming with with an avalanche of comment comments in the first one and in the second one you can see that it's just one line one line and it says that look like you uh, you're checked in some trailing space on uh, several lines of your uh, chain set our style guide spe uh, specifies no trailing white space can you take a look at this so isn't that better rather than sending a lot of uh, unwanted comments like that and it creates a negativity for the uh, contributor as well and it will yeah can you tell me what the i can't read that upper uh, so like, are they saying nasty things or is uh, they, they are saying ex space? yeah extra space extra space extra space for every yeah yeah basically our idea is to actually foster all these new contributors and actually start helping them so let's say if he's an uh, he or she is an uh, new contributor and you see a quite a bit of potential for him to be a, a consistent contributor let's say we start by the second way and if you know him better then let's start by the uh, first way so and <clears throat> this is another scenario where we can see that like let's not leave any contributors uh, hanging without a comment uh, as we in our uh, like kd uh, students community we have always been saying that commit early and commit often so something similar communicate well and communicate often so it it might help uh, each of the students uh, each of the students or contributors to actually get close with the community and Uh, start working consistently and i i hope it's visible <clears throat> yeah so uh, passing off opinion as a fact might be un uh, unhelpful and for that it's better to back up your claims with a documentation uh, reference or a style guide or whatever you have any api documents or whatever share it with them rather than passing off your opinion as a fact uh because yeah <clears throat> don't make it your review seek review seekers problem that uh he didn't find a good reference and so uh so basically asking a uh, devs to fix the problem that they haven't caused might be taken a bit negatively 
So it, it's always nice to actually, like, let's say for an example, uh, an un unhelpful way was, uh, I have always hated how this function is uh, structured. Can you fix it since you are modifying it anyway? So it can create a bit of mm, a negative tone uh, for the co contributor. So let's say, like, looks good to me, we'll create a separate ticket for create uh, clean this file up. So it might actually invoke a sense in the new contributor to actually go and fix that uh, ticket as well, because he has already worked in it. <coughs> so <coughs> asking judgmental questions can also be toxic. So uh, like, let's say if you ask something like, why didn't you just do that or do this? Let's say if you ask, like, you can do this and that, which has the benefit of that and this. So that could, uh, that could give him more, like, it's a part of mentorship, which gives you more, more, which gives the contributor a bit more opportunity to learn and understand what he's doing and be a consistent player for the uh, whole community and benefit us as a community as well. <clears throat> Being sarcastic can obviously be taken offensive and it, 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 it's not always well a uh, right thing to do. So again, for an example, if you ask, like, did you even test this code before you push it or send it over for review? Again, that can create a notion of disrespect for a contributor. And it's always uh, perfect to ask that your code breaks uh, during X, Y, Z test or whatever, or edge cases. Uh, can you address those uh, issues? So that gives him more advantage over the code he has written as well and um, get uh, like uh, um, like the contributor gets a better hold of what he's trying to do so always uh, use a question uh, or recommendation to drive a dialogue uh, rather than just passing a strict comment for instance put all these translations into a constant file uh, it's not, I feel it's not right. So instead ask a question and maybe something like, what would you think about pull, uh, pulling these translations uh, into a, co a constant file? There are a lot and that's, there's a lot and separate file might make sense. So it creates a kind of collaboration between the contributor and uh, the team and it might actually help the community as such to bring a lot of other contributors. So <clears throat> there might be a uh, high performers in your team, which may be uh, doing some toxic behavior within the team. And sometimes you are reluctant to actually uh, talk to them in person and fix what's wrong. So high performance is not, not an excuse. And if there is some kind of uh, such toxicity inside your team or inside your community, it's always, uh, it can always affect the entire team. Uh, and it's always better to fix what actually is there and move on. Also, it, this is something of a greater concern that you might itself be a part of this issue. So it depends on how you actually address this case and uh, be a better, better quality for your community. And yeah, as I told, uh, for example, having uh, supporting a toxic, uh, high performing uh, developer can also affect your team uh, and low grade its morale of your team. Uh, always your focus should be on creating a supportive environment. If for instance, if you are a, a maintainer of your project or you are a team lead, it's, or even a developer, uh, the way you can contribute to a community to keep its morale always high is to uh, always encourage people to have a supportive environment in your in the project. So, yeah, a uh, few of the helpful uh, ways to actually help and hold on to the new contributors is not to uh, micromanage. Uh, always ask questions and don't just pass off a comment. 
uh, always encourage for a debate. Yeah, point to resources if they are stuck. Respect and respond to every comments that's there. And uh, yeah, so if somebody is seeking for uh, help, use that opportunity to actually teach them and uh, don't show off so that they will be a consistent contributor and they can move on with the project later on. And yeah, as I told, don't excuse any un unhelpful uh, behavior as the as it's the uh, way things are. And and this might be the most difficult part. Maybe uh, asking the people who are toxic to be aware of the fact. So you have you don't have to be afraid of that. It's always better to tell them that this is causing a problem in the team, and you can actually change. And that way, the, uh, the that contributor actually could evolve as a person and help the community in different ways. And for admins or a team lead, it's always better to listen to your team's concern if such toxicity actually exists. And yeah. So I'm not policing any content or anything like that, just asking all to be uh, like welcoming and mindful of their tone. And uh, it, it's all just a trivial uh, communication uh, stuff that we can actually take care of and bring a huge change into our community and uh, hold on to the, uh, like the new contributors that actually comes to, to our community. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Aniket. Uh, anybody has any questions? Uh, I happen to be fortunate enough to uh, be a reviewer for a, an open source project which gets lots of uh, new contributors uh, sending pull requests. Um, a few times, uh, when a, a contribution uh, has many, many different issues. I'm thinking of the extra space mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, issue. Okay. But I think of all comments being completely different stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I sometimes feel like I prefer uh, to limit myself to commenting at, at most five issues with the, the changes. And if there's more, uh, just uh, send all only five, wait for the, the person to fix them, and then review again the rest yeah. of the thing. I'm not sure, however, if it's better to review all at once. I, I, I fear that if I, I have too much feedback, it may uh, affect the morale of the person. Yeah. What, what's your thought on that? I think the same. Like, uh, for let's say if the contributor is not well versed with your project, or he's actually learning to a, a try and contribute to it, or maybe the technology stack is really new to him. It will, yeah, the way you do it will be really helpful, like a smaller set of reviews, and he can work on it and get back to you again. And if that's fixed, then you can give the next set of tasks. So it's basically, I feel like it's kind of a mentoring process. Like you are giving a particular set of tasks to be completed in a work which, is, which he or she is actually interested, and he can complete that. Uh, and he can come back to you again. So I think that's a right way to uh, do a code review. Yeah. My input, being a non-coder, is if there's something that's bo bothering you, like extra spaces all the time, then instead of criticizing every new contributor about their extra spaces, that you write the bot that helps all of the contributors fix all of the extra spaces. Because you probably have some in your code too. You just didn't catch them. So we have something like a lint that check your code syntax. Yes. Whenever there is extra space, it gives you a warning inside the code itself. But people have to install it. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, any more questions? What do you think is the best way to? Um, uh, ping people who haven't responded in a while. So like, if you, if you ask for feedback and you haven't gotten it, what's the best way someone who's experiencing the project to um, ask that, um, wh whether they're still working on this or if um, they have something new to offer? 
I'm not sure if I got your question right. Like, are oh. you asking if... Uh, so, oh, sorry, I wasn't speaking to the mic. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, so, like, if, if, um, if a new contributor creates a pull request with a, um, a, a couple of new features and you request changes, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they don't get back to you, what's the best way to sort of um, nudge them or to ask for uh, an, an update of some sort mm -hmm. with, without being coming across as rude or yeah. pushy? I, I don't know... I always find that very hard on projects to figure out the right timing or uh... Uh, so like are you asking if somebody actually sends a patch uh, request like uh, pull request up but maybe uh, among buses, um, you don't get a reply oh, okay so uh, what should be our response like other new contributors response exactly so what, what's what's the best way to sort of try and, and deal with that? Do you close the pull request and, and say, we can't do this at the moment, the code base you worked on is too different, or uh, leave it open, or leave a comment, or send an email? I, I always find that difficult to figure out. Do you have any recommendations? Or? Uh, like, most of the time, if for my, uh, for my personal uh, cases, like uh, when I contributed to multiple various open source organizations, even I have uh, like gone through such uh, cases where like I have sent a pull request and uh, like maybe it took more than one to two months to get feedback on that. So basically what I used to do was that if, if I have a new uh, change, like let's say I, I send a, a first pull request and again uh, after some time I didn't get a, a feedback back. So uh, I'll again maybe traverse through the code again and uh, if, if I find something, I'll fix that and again send the same like fix that and send the pull request. So at that point, I will act again actually ping them uh, and ask them if they are free to give a, a re response back. So basically, okay. it's f from my context of the talk, uh, I I'm asking all the code reviewers to actually respond to whatever uh, comments they get so that the contributors don't, we don't let all these contributors uh, hang in. Sounds good. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah, go. So uh, what we do, we have a bot doing this. So if the if the developer comments and there is no feedback within a month, like no response to the suggested changes, there is a bot that pings to people, hey, are you still working on this patch? Then does it second time. And if there is still no response, then it oh. drops the patch. Yeah. Any more questions? I think uh, it's time. Uh, thank you, Aniket, for your talk.